Hey there, my crafty friends. This is Misty with Gleesman Designs. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. As always, if you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new here, let me know down in the comments. I would love to say hi. For today's video, I have five high-end home decor DIYs, so let's jump right into it. DIY number one is this gorgeous vase slash candle holder. For this DIY, you will need one of the Dollar Tree glass vases and some type of painter's tape, whether it is frog tape or whatever type of tape you would like. For this vase, I'm going to be painting the bottom portion of it, so I'm taking the frog tape and I'm just wrapping it around the vase where I would like that to start. You could have yours closer to the top, closer to the bottom, wherever you would like. Then you're just going to simply take the rest of that frog tape and start covering the portion of the vase. And I do cover the top of the vase just simply because I don't want the paint to get down inside either. Once you have the portion of the vase taped off that you would like to remain clear, I just used some Rust-Oleum chalk paint, spray paint. You could definitely hand paint this as well. And I spray painted the vase. And when it is dry, you can simply remove all of the tape and you will have this nice, crisp, clean line. As some of you may know, Dollar Tree is now carrying metal ribbon and I am absolutely obsessed with using this. It actually cuts very, very easily as you can see here. I thought it was going to be a lot harder to cut, but it actually cuts nice and easy. All I did was cut the size that I needed to fit around the vase and then I just wrap it around and hot glue it into place. The reason why I'm holding mine upside down while I'm doing this is because I want the metal ribbon to line right up with that white paint. And it is that simple and this DIY is done. I have used this DIY in so many different ways, whether it's just sitting just like that, nice and by itself, letting the natural beauty show, or add a candle to use it as a candle holder. Then I also have placed florals in there and greeneries to use it as a vase as well. DIY number two is this wood tray with leather handles. For this DIY, you would need five of the 12 inch wood pieces from Dollar Tree. You could also go to a hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot and get the wood even cheaper. But if you'd like to keep it all Dollar Tree, or if you don't have a hardware store close, like I of course do not. So I just kind of keep it all Dollar Tree. I know it's a few extra dollars, but it's okay. You can definitely go to a hardware store and get it cheaper if you would like. So I sanded all five of those wood pieces down and then I used some wood glue also from Dollar Tree and I used my hot glue gun that has the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks in there. And so that gives it a really good hold as well. But with the wood glue, I'm sure you could use pretty much any type of hot glue because it will have a really nice strong hold. So all you have to do is glue all five of those wood pieces together. Once your glue is all dry, you can paint or stain your tray whatever color you would like. I decided to go with kind of a gray color and I am actually doing the faux stain technique, which is just mixing whatever color paint you would like. And this is the, I believe, Elephant by Waverly. And you mix whatever paint color you would like with a few drops of water, really kind of watering it down. The more water you put in, the lighter the stain will be. And then you just go ahead and stain it just like you would a normal project. Place it right on your project with a paintbrush and or you could also use a paper towel as well to put it on and then use a clean paper towel to wipe off the excess. You are going to do this to the entire tray, making sure that you get the sides as well. And look how gorgeous this faux stain technique comes out and you have no icky smells, harsh chemicals or really any dry time. It dries within just a few minutes. Using a chippy brush from the Dollar Tree, this is just one of the ones that come in a three pack. I add some white chalk paint onto the entire tray, first kind of doing it lightly, and then I go in just a little bit extra heavy dry brushing, only in a few little spots. Like I don't do the entire tray, as you see, I just kind of add a little bit extra touches here and there. For the handles on the tray, I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree leather. Everybody has been going crazy about this stuff and I can totally see why for $1.25, this is absolutely amazing. I cut two strips at 12 inches long and a half inch wide. Then I add some hot glue down at one end and create a loop with the strip of leather. Once I have the loop made, I take my hot glue gun again and add a line of hot glue right in the center of that strip so that you can kind of smash it down and it will create one strip of leather where the leather is basically shown on both sides. 
This faux leather only has the leather print on one side. So basically you're just making a strip that the leather is being shown on both sides. Again, by creating just a loop and then add some hot glue in the center and then smash it down. And then you'll have two strips like this where the leather is shown on both sides. To attach the leather to the tray, I'm going to be using these thumbtacks from Dollar Tree, but I wanted them to be silver and I could not find any silver ones, so I just simply painted a few of these gold ones with my metallic folk art sterling silver paint. I placed the leather onto the wood tray by kind of making it have a loop in the center. Then I just take the thumbtacks and press it down on both sides of the leather, making sure that it goes down into the wood. Then you will just repeat the same process on the other side of the wood tray. And here's how this beautiful wood tray turned out. I love how this DIY turned out. Those leather strap handles to me give it such a high-end look. I have actually had this wood tray for quite some time now and I do display it out in my own home and I have decorated it quite a few different ways so I placed some photos in here so that you guys can see how I did those decorations as well. There are just so many different ways you could use to dress up this wood tray. DIY number three is this This Is Us wall decor and you can actually hang decor on this as well. For this DIY, you will need a long sign from Dollar Tree. It does not have to be this exact sign. You just need any long sign. I want this sign to kind of have a shiplap wood look to it. So I just use my white chalk paint and paint the entire sign white. Then I take a pencil and a ruler and just make lines going throughout the sign. You could do as many or as little lines as you would like. Then to kind of give it that wood look, I take my finger and smudge those pencil lines and I do kind of smudge some spots more than others. I have been wanting to use this This Is Us wall sticker from Dollar Tree for quite some time now and I see them at Dollar Tree still to this day and all I do is take the stickers and place them right onto the sign making sure that it is centered. You could also add a layer of Mod Podge or a spray sealer over top of this if you would like as well. To create a border on this sign, I'm using these bamboo skewer sticks from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut them down with my miter shears and you can definitely use scissors for these to cut these down as well. They, they cut very, very easily. But just be careful when you cut them because if you don't hold them down the right way, the other end will definitely go flying across the room. Using the Craftwise chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree, I go ahead and paint all of those pieces that I cut down to create the border. And to create that border, all I did was hold those skewer sticks up to the sign and kind of mark it down and then cut it down in those spots. Once you have all your border pieces painted, go ahead and add your hot glue, wood glue, or whatever type of glue you would like, and then just start placing those pieces around creating your border. At Dollar Tree, they sell these over the door hangers with the hooks on them. And all I do is just take the part that goes over the door that's bent and I just bend it as straight as I possibly could. Once those are straight, you can add that to your sign by simply pacing your sign face down, then adding some hot glue on those parts that you just straightened out. Make sure you do add a decent amount and I am using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. I would recommend E6000 for something like this as well, but I did not have any E6000 on hand, so I did use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. And I will have those linked down below in the description box. But for just one more security hold, I added some hot glue going across that metal part and added some jumbo popsicle sticks, making sure that it kept that in place as well. Then all I did was add a twine hanger by simply placing a little bit of hot glue onto the back of the sign and adding smaller pieces of popsicle stick, making sure that the twine stays in place. And here's how this gorgeous DIY turned out. This was another one that went viral on my TikTok page and I can totally see why I am just obsessed with this DIY. I think this would be so adorable in the kitchen to hang spatulas on it, in the bathroom to hang towels, hats, gloves, or you could hang home decor also.
On to DIY number four, which is this no glue boxwood greenery wreath. For this DIY, you will need one of the bamboo wreath forms from Dollar Tree and four of their boxwood greenery picks. Which by the way, this new floral garden brand from Dollar Tree is absolutely amazing. You should see some of the other greeneries they have now as well. All I did was use the Dollar Tree garden shears and cut apart each of those Dollar Tree greenery picks. When you are cutting these down, they do not have to have a really long stem on them, but you want them to have a long enough stem so that you can poke them into the wreath. Just in case you're able to see it through some of the greenery pieces onto the wreath form, I did go ahead and add some of this darker green paint, and honestly, I am not even sure where this paint came from. It was just in my paints bucket <laughs> and I decided it was the closest to the greenery so I used it. You could probably really use any kind of darker green paint that you would like. And once your paint is dry all you have to do is start pushing the greenery stems into the wreath form. These bamboo wreath forms are kind of wrapped a little bit tight but they are loose enough to where you can get those stem picks right in there like and they are so tight that they do not need glue at all. Once you do this, you hardly ever want to make any other kind of wreath because it is just so easy. I love making wreaths like these, especially using the bamboo wreath forms because like I said, all you are doing is just pushing those stems right into the wreath form. Simply keep pushing those greenery pieces into those cracks on the wreath form until you have your wreath completely full. And I don't know about you, but I am already in love. At first I was going to make this wreath without a bow at all so I chose this ribbon at first and to place the ribbon onto the wreath all I do is move the greenery out of the way then place the ribbon into the center of the wreath then bring it up the back and make it into a loop up at the top. But like I said I do end up changing this ribbon out to one of the ribbons that I also used for the bow. For the bow, I'm going to be using this neutral farmhouse ribbon pack that I now have on my Amazon store, so I will have this linked down below, and I cut my ribbon at 23 inches, and then to dovetail the ends, all I do is fold it in half, and then cut it at an inward diagonal angle. Once you have your ends dovetailed, you're going to lay your ribbon down so that it is laying face down, then pull the ends in towards the center, kind of creating that cancer awareness ribbon shape. Then all you have to do is take that top loop and place it where the two ribbons meet right there in the center, and then squish it in at the center as well. You could use a Chanel stem or a floral wire to hold your bow together, but I just used some of the Dollar Tree Jew twine. I absolutely love the way the twine center looks, and I just place it onto the center of the bow and wrap it around quite a few times, creating a cute little center in the bow, and this also keeps your bow together. So once you have it wrapped a few times, just go ahead and cut off the excess and hot glue it into place. Then all you have to do is kind of fluff out your loops and pull down your ends however you would like them and you have a super cute bow. I absolutely love this wreath with or without the bow so I wanted to be able to take the bow off really easily so I just used a small little clothespin. I believe Dollar Tree also carries small little clothespins as well and you could also use big clothespins for larger bows and all I do is just hot glue that right to the back of the bow. First, here is how this absolutely stunning boxwood greenery wreath turned out without the bow. And there's where you could also see how I changed the top of the ribbon so that it did match the bow if I wanted to place the bow on there as well. Again, I think this wreath just looks so high end and I have seen these online for as much as almost $97. I posted that on my TikTok and people were just blown away. And then you could also add that really cute little bow and this is adorable as well. Let me know in the comments, do you like it with or without the bow? DIY number five is this absolutely stunning lantern. I have seen so many different amazing ways to make this lantern and so I just had to give my own little spin on it and give it a try. So I'm going to use one of these like shadow box decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I just break off the inner hanger part on the shadow box. 
Also, if your shadow box has anything on the front of it that could kind of make it off balance, go ahead and pull that off as well. And of course, you will need the good old Dollar Tree Hot Wheel tracks. Take one of the race tracks and add one of the ends into one corner of the shadow box and you want to add a nice bit of hot glue into that corner as well. Then you will take the other end of your race track and bend it over to the other side of the corner of your shadow box directly across from the corner that you just glued it creating this loop. You will also want to glue that corner down as well. Then you are going to do the same thing with the second race track by placing it into one of the corners, adding a nice bit of hot glue, but this time when you bend it over, you want to bend it over top of the previous race track that you put on to your shadow box, then you're going to hot glue that spot down as well. But of course, once I had both of the racetrack pieces glued down, that's when I realized I kind of wanted the opposite side of the racetrack to be facing frontwards. Do you see how there's actually more of a lip now on this side than there is on the other side of the racetrack? I hope you guys understand what I'm saying, but you, you'll kind of understand a little bit once you see when I put the half wood beads on. So all I'm doing here is just changing it out because I didn't want you guys to be like, wait a minute, that looks different and me not explain why. So once I had the racetrack pieces turned around, I just add some hot glue up at the top where the two racetracks meet, making sure that they were nice and center. Using the set of half wood beads that I also got off of Amazon, I will also have these linked down below. I believe I used the 12mm or 15mm, but you could use whatever size that you would like. And all I did was start adding hot glue onto all of those half wooden beads and then just start placing them onto the racetrack. You could place your half wood beads as close together or as far apart as you would like. And again, I am using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks, so definitely check out the description box for those. These are my go-to glue sticks. I have never had an issue with really any type of surface when it comes to this glue stick. So you could use E6000 or really whatever type you would like, but that's just definitely what I recommend. I place the half wood beads going all the way up until there's just a little space up at the top and then I'm going to use the top of this little jar that I got from Dollar Tree. You could also use the top of a mason jar as well. What I'm doing is creating a finial look for the top of this and I'm just going to add some hot glue at the top of the race tracks, making sure I place the hot glue on all of the points where the lid is going to meet the race tracks and then I place that lid right on top. And if there's any spots that you can get to from the outside, go ahead and just add some hot glue, again, making sure that lid is nice and secure. Dollar Tree carries packs of ping pong balls, and I'm just going to take one of the balls, place some hot glue right onto the ping pong ball, then place it into the center at the top of the lantern. Then I just use a smaller wood bead that I had in my stash, and I just add, again, some hot glue right onto the bead and place it onto the center of the top of the ping pong ball. You can use Dollar Tree beads as well because we're going to be painting this, so it doesn't really matter what color the bead is. For the tippy top of our finial, I'm going to be using one of these smaller, like, weird shape wood beads from Dollar Tree, and I just, again, add some hot glue onto the bottom of the wood bead, and then place it on top of the second wood bead. Once I had everything in place, I just used that Rust-Oleum white chalk paint spray paint again and sprayed the whole entire lantern. Dollar Tree actually carries several different styles of that metal ribbon, and for this lantern, I'm using this style here. I cut a piece of the metal ribbon long enough to go around the lid that we put at the top of the lantern, but it is a little bit too wide, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off this part here where it has those little dots that is going that are going down the center so that it is not so wide. All you want to have left is the top part that has those leaf-looking prints on there. For this project, I kind of thought the metal was just a little bit too shiny, so I go with my Hello Hobby antiquing wax. You could use whatever kind of antiquing wax you would like. I'm sure you could even use brown paint or you could even paint them as well. So all I did was kind of doll them down and add some of that antiquing wax on both of those pieces. And I didn't completely paint them, I just did a nice heavy dry brushing. Using my hot glue gun, I just start hot gluing the metal ribbon around the bottom base of the shadow box, creating a really pretty border going all the way around the shadow box. 
If you've used this metal ribbon before, you definitely know that you really do need a strong glue for this, so E6000 or a strong hot glue is definitely highly recommended. Once you have the metal ribbon glued completely around the bottom shadow box, you're going to pretty much do the exact same thing to the lid that we put at the top of the lantern. At this point, you could leave your lantern just as is, but of course, I always have to go a step further, and I just again take that little chippy brush from Dollar Tree and add some antiquing wax onto the beads and pretty much the entire lantern so that it gives us this really nice distressed look. And here is how this absolutely beautiful lantern turned out. I absolutely love this lantern. I've seen it done in so many different ways and they always turn out looking absolutely gorgeous. And I definitely want to say a big thumbs up to whoever came up with this idea of the racetracks. It is absolutely amazing. As always, I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. If so, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you would like to be notified when I post new uploads, hit that subscribe and the bell notification and YouTube should notify you when I post new uploads. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!